when I argued with my parent that going to school is not in my mind. They were laughing at me. They told me that without school, I will not be able to survive. Because of this, I did everything to ensure that I am admitted into the university. Five years into the university is not an easy task. I read all day and night just to make sure I do not get carried over. Now, what is my gain? When I see my mate driving latest car, when I see my mate building mansion, when I see my mate living comfortably, I am ashamed of myself. What is the point of spending those numbers of years without any achievement? I did not go to school to learn only how to speak English. I did not go to school to learn only how to read and write, but to make money out of the education. 5 plus 25 is equal to 30. This is my exactly 30 years of age. So, this is how I will die without achieving anything. No. I refuse to die. I must live to declare the works of the Lord. Man of God, please pray for me. I have sat here for two hours now, because of ill health. Please man of God, pray for me. No. I am not a pastor, I am a jobless man, who is looking for where to lean on. But my mind cannot lie to me. You are a pastor. Just pray for me, I will be fine. Can you not hear me? I have never been to any preaching school. I went to the university. I am a graduate of civil engineering, and not a graduate from Bible school. Please spare me that. As I am now, I am looking for a good work, that will make me rich. I will not mind doing anything that will bring money. Whether good, or bad. But I am seeing you as a minister of God. And I believe that once you speak to God on my behalf, that I will be fine. Yes, it is my faith. Look at that beautiful house. Wow. Will anything happen, if I build that kind of house? I am ashamed of myself, at 30. Maybe, your time has not yet come. When, will my time come? Will my time come after I am death? Why is my own time delayed? My friends who are younger than me, are building mansions, driving latest cars, and you are talking about time here. I have submitted my CV everywhere, and yet, no one calls me for appointment. Relax, for I understand how you feel. Ecclesiastes 3, 1 to 8 says, For everything there is a season, and a time for everything matter under heaven. A time to be born, and a time to die. A time to plant, and a time to pluck up what is planted. A time to kill, and a time to heal. A time to break down, and a time to build up. A time to weep, and a time to laugh. A time to mourn, and a time to dance. A time to throw away stones, and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to seek, and a time to lose. A time to keep, and a time to throw away. A time to tear, and a time to sow. A time to keep silence, and a time to speak. A time to love, and a time to hate. A time for war, and a time for peace. I do not understand you. Where is my own time? Your time is coming. Sign number one is that, if you were man ordained by God to work as a minister of the gospel of Christ, you will be observing that, people who do not know you at first sight, will be addressing you as the minister of the gospel of Christ. Once you are beginning to observe this unexpected title to you, it is a clear sign that, your call is ministration. My brother, thank God that, I finally meet you in the office today. Man of God, sit down. Why are you surprised that, I said you should sit? Sign number two, another person repeat the same title in jovial manner. My brother, since after our graduation, life has been very tough with me, to the point that I almost beg to eat. Look at you, you are doing very well, take a look at your office.
very beautiful. Ask me now, what I am doing for a living. I will not be able to say anything. My life is just turned upside down. God forbid. I rebuke that kind of statement in Jesus' name, Amen. Please stop saying that. It has never gone to that extent. Stop wishing yourself negativity. What are you doing now for a living? So, all this while that I am saying, I am jobless, and you think I am lying to you. I am not lying. Life is not easy with me. I do not have anything doing. Then, what is your plan on what to do? I came to meet you, if there is a vacant in your office. Then if there is none, I request for some money to establish myself a business. Someone came here yesterday, and I employed him as my secretary. Which means that, if you had come earlier, you would have gotten the work. I am sorry. There is no vacant for now. Brother, what about some money to start a business? The money that I have now, is meant for something very important to me. So, don't you have any other money to give me apart from the one that it's meant for your purpose? There is this my pastor friend, he has a very big ministry, I do not know if you would like to work with him. As what? Just go to him, you might get favor from him. Come in. Wow. Good afternoon, sir. Welcome, man of God. Sign number three, this is a clear indication that you are someone God has chosen to work as a minister of the gospel of Christ. Wow. My friend directed me to meet you, for help. Like what kind of help? Man of God, is this your office? This must be a millionaire office. Is this money comes from only offering? Do you have any other business doing? This is magnificent. This is wonderful. Of course, it is my office. Look at the standard, world class. This is wonderful. I do not expect a common pastor to have all of these. Men of God, are not common. They are bigger than ordinary men. Men of God. Life is very tough with me. I graduated from the university last four years, no money to start business, and no job neither. I came to see if you can offer me a financial assistance. Fine. Will you like to work as the servant of God? Let's start from there. Man of God what? My intention was to build mansion like my mate. And drive good car like them. Working here might delay my destiny, in achieving those things. Man of God, let me think about it. I am saying that because working for God, is not an easy task. But everyone calls me man of God, everywhere I go. Pastor is it true that, I have the anointing, to work as a minister of God? I still have to think about it. Okay, but time wait for no one. Wow. I must change my mind, to establish a church. Just look at the office of the man of God. No, I must change my man. Everyone is calling me, man of God, man of God. That means I am called into the ministry of God, to work in the Lord vineyard. That man of God is doing very well. I will also do well when I have my own ministry. The most important thing now is the money, to start my ministry work. John 14, 2 says, in my father's house there are many mansions. And if not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? Jesus mentioned mansions. That means, I must build mansion. Thank you Jesus. Thank you Jesus. I think I will call my friend to ask money again. Whether he will give me, or not. Can I compare this little room with the pastor's office? No. I am living in boys' quarter at my age. How can I live in the boys' quarter? No, I reject it, in Jesus' name. Let me off light and sleep.
he that sin, should sin no more, for the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent from your sin. Stop fornication. Stop adultery, for the Bible says, whoever commit adultery shall be punished. This is the voice of the Lord. Jesus said, I am the way, and the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. John 14, 6 Jesus came for the salvation of mankind. Turn from your old way and follow Jesus. For who believes in Jesus, will not perish, but will have every lasting life. You cannot survive without Jesus. Here is the voice, that is crying in the desert. This is the confirmation. Preaching in my dream is a sign that God has called me. That means I need to establish a ministry and work for God. Church of Christ, praise the Lord. May the blessings of God continue to be your portions in Jesus' name I pray. Are you happy today? If you are happy, turn to your neighbor and say, you will receive your miracle today. Let it be so, in Jesus' name, Amen. For God so loved the world, that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believe in Him, shall not perish, but have a everlasting life. When you believe in Jesus, the Son of God, He will guide and protect you. Let someone read the book of Romans chapter number 8, verse number 31. Romans 8 31 says, What, then, shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? The things are the dozens of amazing proofs of God's unfailing love, listed in the preceding verses. For, no man would have loved to lay his life, for another man to live. It can only be done by Christ. And Christ came to save the soul of man, from eternal condemnation. It therefore means that, we are saved by love of Christ. Let Christ dwell in you, and you shall receive eternal healing, in Christ's name alone. Therefore, there is now, no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And the one that gets us through difficult times. We know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love Him, who have been called according to His purpose. Verse 31 of Romans 8 is a combination of all those wonderful promises. It reminds us who God is, and how He helps us. When we grasp the truth that, God is for us, we have nothing to fear. God is for us in the sense that, He is on our side. He is working on our behalf, and for our good. He has proved His benevolence, in that He has adopted us, Romans 8.15. He has given us His Spirit, and He has determined to save us. The follow-up question, who can be against us, is rhetorical. It's another way of saying, there is no one who could possibly be more powerful than God, or no one can destroy us. The idea is not that, we will never face opposition, it's simply that our opposition is doomed to failure. They may be against us, but not successfully against us. Since God is on our side, we have nothing to worry about. This is the word of God. And may God bless us, in Jesus' name, Amen. Sister Margaret, welcome. Thank you, man of God. Please, sir, my husband sent me a gift to you. Okay. Sir, the gift is outside. Sir, this is your car. Thank you Jesus, for the gift of new car. I am beginning to celebrate the beauty of God. Another sign is that, you shall succeed, and the closed door shall open to you, because you have accepted the call for your anointing. Finally, other signs that you will observe are, 1. A deep trust in God, despite the difficulties you may be facing, you have a deep trust in God, and His plan for your life. The second is the supernatural peace. 
you experience a supernatural peace in the midst of trouble, knowing that God is in control. A powerful prayer life, your prayer life is even more powerful in times of trouble, and you experience a deeper connection with God through prayer. The fourth sign is the testimony of God's faithfulness. Despite the trouble, you may be facing, you have a testimony of God's faithfulness in your life, and the lives of others. The fifth one is the deeper dependence on God. The difficulties you face drive you to depend on God even more, and you see His provision and guidance in your life. Another sign is increased spiritual discernment. You are able to discern the voice of God and the leading of the Holy Spirit more clearly, even in times of trouble. Thanks for watching this video. God bless you.